LDL, we know very readily, is a product from the liver. And so while the liver is the first one exposed to LPS before it would then move throughout the rest of the blood, the liver is at the same time producing LDL. And again, we classically think of LDL as just being a problem in promoting atherosclerotic plaques. That is extremely debatable. What is much less debatable because the data are so clear is the fact that LDL, this lipoprotein carrying these fats also has on it like HDL specific, what's called LPS binding proteins or LBP. So there are these binding proteins that I mentioned earlier without giving them a name that are going to lock in the LPS and then take it to the liver and then the liver will process it and excrete it through the bile duct into the intestines to be eliminated from the body. So LP, and this is a study entitled lipopolysaccharide is cleared from the circulation by hepatocytes via the low density lipoprotein receptor. And they did this study in rodents look, by manipulating the LDL receptors. This was published in the journal Plus One in 2016. So direct evidence in many, many other studies finding that uh, LDL will bind LPS. So while you are eating um, a diet that might be high in saturated fats and people will claim that's increasing inflammation without uh, evidence. In fact, there are studies from Volick and Finney showing that inflammation goes down, but you have LDL levels going up and that might be potentially improving the overall inflammatory profile in the body. We're talking about leaky gut, seeing it through the lens of LPS, this very primary um, leaky molecule that is moving and then offending the body. And LDL and HDL act as saviors in a way by physically binding this leaked molecule and then putting it back where it belongs, back into the guts, but at a point where it no longer has the ability to get back uh, absorbed back into the body. The final study I wanted to mention in, high, in highlighting LDL's role as an immune regulator was published in 2007, so this is a little older, and it's published in the Annals of Clinical Laboratory Science. The lead author, last name is Shore, S-H-O-R, and the name of the title of the study is Low Serum LDL Cholesterol Levels and the Risk of Fever, Sepsis, and Malignancy. They divided the study subjects into two groups, people with low LDL which they considered at lower than 70 milligrams per deciliter, which is on the low end of healthy. But of course, a lot of physicians would say that's wonderful. Clinical markers would say, oh, your LDL is great. It's so low. And then the high was above 70, which I don't think is very high at all. Uh, but nevertheless, the group with low LDL demonstrated increased odds of hematological cancer, so like leukemia, by more than 15 fold. Now, let me just pause there for just one second. 15 times. So people with low LDL levels were 15 times more likely to have a blood-based cancer. It might be relevant that LDL is part of the immune system and maybe a sufficient LDL helps to stop this before it ever becomes a substantial problem. That's enormous speculation. Low LDL levels also increase the odds of fever and sepsis. Sepsis is a severe infection. This is when a person typically has to go to the hospital. So septic shock is, is part of this. So sepsis is a very, very bad infection. Of course, if you have a compromised immune system, that's going to happen much more readily. And indeed, the odds were five times. Again, that's a, that's a real number. Uh, people with low LDL were five times more likely to have serious infections known as sepsis. Leaky gut is real. One of the main offending agents is a part of a bacteria called lipopolysaccharide or LPS. It passes from the guts into the blood, promoting inflammation throughout the body, also promoting insulin resistance. Fructose is known to enhance that movement or enhance the leakiness of the gut. Polyunsaturated fats are known to enhance leakiness. In contrast, saturated fats, there's evidence to show that they might in fact be attempting to uh, resolve that or improve the integrity of the guts. Once LPS has made it into the blood, the body has built in molecules to try to bind and remove the LPS before it can create these systemic problems. And this comes in the form of the oft reviled LDL and the oft championed HDL, regardless, in addition to moving lipids around the body, which is how we typically think of these LDL and HDL, they clearly have immune roles. And one of them is the binding and the removal of LPS from the body.